Namaste everyone. Namaste everybody. Namaste everyone and welcome back. Hello everyone and welcome to Nepal. Namaste. Hey everyone, it's Riley and welcome back to another video. Today is a bit of a bittersweet moment as I wrap up my Nepal series. I just want to say thank you to you all who have joined me on this journey. Your support has meant the absolute world. And in today's video, I will be giving my overall thoughts, feelings, recommendations, tips, tricks, and kind of anything that I picked up to help other travelers book their own Nepal trip. I will also be answering frequently asked questions that I received from you guys, such as safety, dress code, etc. <laughs> So the best spots for tourism, from my experience, Pokhara is an absolute must visit. The vibrant culture, the breathtaking landscapes, just make this destination top notch for any traveler. This is incredible. Pokhara for me really had everything from beautiful mountains, lake views, paragliding, whitewater rafting, as well as trekking and great food spots. You can really do it all in Pokhara. So it kind of caters to every traveler. Pokhara is so gorgeous. I, I don't want to leave. I had so many amazing experiences in Nepal. It's so hard to pick just one, but my favorite things I did were, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Paragliding. Paragliding was such a great one for me. Um, definitely jumped out of my comfort zone with that one. My tour guide was super, super lovely. He made the whole experience really, really nice. Look how high we are. And a bonus for anyone that's watching, I hear the price has dropped to 3,000 rupees instead of the 12,000 that I paid to do it. So it's even cheaper, so you should do it when you're on your trip. I would highly, highly recommend it. Oh my gosh, you can see the snowy mountains. Oh my goodness. Annapurna Cable Car was easily one of my favorite days. So much to do up there. I went on the giant swing there, there's restaurants, Gorgeous views of Annapurna mountain range. You have sunset, which was just absolutely breathtaking. So there's just like so much to do in one spot, which is why I really loved the Annapurna cable car. We have just made it to Durba Square. Durba Square, whichever one I visited in my first impressions of Nepal video was so much fun. There's just a bunch of things to do, like learning to bay back chal with locals, great food spots on Freak Street, like the famous Momo place, viewing the living goddess, the Kamari, and seeing beautiful buildings and stores. The local bread is the Newari bread. Newari bread. Last but not least, it has to be my food tour. I just loved having a guide, trying Nepalese food for the first time. I can handle hot spicier. In so many different places, like the courtyards we went to, I never would have been able to find them on my own. And I just really love the experience of having a guide explain the dishes to me, get to watch them prepared live in front of me. It was just really, really fun. I would go on another food tour. There's so many different foods that I didn't get to try on that tour, so, it's just something I could see myself doing again, and I would recommend it to anyone that goes to Nepal. Book a food tour, it's worth it. Of course, not every moment was sunshine and rainbows. I guess I would say that my worst experience would have to be the 11 hour bus trip. I hate to say it, it was an interesting experience, but it just was super long, I felt sick, the roads were really bumpy and a lot of you guys told me in the comments that we were actually overcharged for our tickets. So that also didn't add a lot of sweetness to the journey. I am praying that there is a bathroom somewhere here. Overall, I was happy I got the comparison between flying and the bus ride, but I just wouldn't choose to do the bus again. I feel like the 20 minutes on the plane versus an entire day taken out of exploring Nepal, I would save up the money for my next trip to just fly in and out of Pokhara. It makes it so much easier. I hear that the highway is actually getting fixed, so that's why it took so long. So apparently in 2025, a commenter told me that the trip should be shorter. You can also opt for a car ride or a minivan that might also cut your ride in half. Probably more expensive, but less expensive than a plane. Die all without regrets. Yes, exactly. <laughs> 
Regrets, I have none, but there are a few things I wish I had time to do while I was in Nepal, and hopefully I will get to do them when I come back in the future. Hello. How are you, Wanda? Hello. Homestay in Nepal, staying with a local family and getting to experience what their life is like here. A few friends of mine did it while they were in Nepal and it just looked like such an incredible experience and I really, really want to do it for myself in a future trip. Uh, here are their videos for reference. But yeah, I feel like I would absolutely just love to get more connected with the locals and have that experience. Bye guys. Visiting Chitwan National Park and doing a safari tour. I wish I got to see Chitwan. I know a lot of you wanted me to go there. I hear you can see rhinos walking in the middle of the street. And apparently it's just a really great place to go for two to three days while in Nepal. Um, so I wish I got to see Chitwan. I wish I got to see the wild rhinos, but again, I'll do it in my next trip. I literally feel like vomiting at the thought of jumping off this. Bungee jumping. This one was an activity that was on my to-do list for a while while I was in Nepal, but I ran out of time. I'm not too sad about it because the idea of bungee jumping terrifies the living daylights out of me, but I'll face that fear one day and I'm a little bit disappointed that I didn't get to face that fear in Nepal on this trip, but I'll do it. I'll do it one day. Oh my gosh. Next time I visit Nepal, I will definitely be doing some sort of trek. I really enjoyed seeing the gorgeous Himalayan mountain ranges, but I would love to one day climb them for myself. I do need to do a lot of training before I do it. I know so many of you wanted me to trek while I was here. I'm just not fit enough, so it just wasn't worthwhile putting myself in that position if I couldn't complete it. So I will do training and I will be more prepared next time. Your girl is unfit. Whew. So this one is one that I actually knew nothing about when I arrived, but you guys in the comments commented it on every single video, and that is Mustang and Limbini. You all said that you have to go to both of these places. So I know nothing about them. I hear that they're just gorgeous, more remote, more local. So I'll take your recommendation. I couldn't change plans so last minute this trip and visit while I was there, but I'll note it down and hopefully I can make that a reality uh, in my next Nepal series, whenever that is. I think it's gonna be a little bit scary walking down here at night, but hopefully I can make a friend. Now onto safety. I can confidently say that I always felt secure when traveling alone during the day. However, I can't speak for nighttime adventures as I never ventured out solo after dark. Overall, Nepal felt welcoming, the people were generally friendly and super helpful. There was only one time I felt unsafe while I was in Nepal and that was walking home from dinner one night with a friend. This beggar came up and didn't say a word, just started like, right next to the shoulder of my friend, leaning over their shoulder, like grabbing at their wallet. I felt really intimidated by them because I couldn't communicate with them and they were kind of like grabbing at our things. And I was like, are we about to get robbed? Like what's happening? So um, that's one thing that I, the only time I felt um, unsafe or uncomfortable in Nepal, other than that, people were amazing. So that's just an example of something that wasn't so nice, but um, yeah, it happened once. Almost sundown now, but I'm having so much fun. I hope you are too. Okay, what areas are the safest? Everywhere in Nepal is pretty safe. I felt safe everywhere. Uh, Pokhara was amazing. Nagakot, super safe. Uh, I hear Chitwan's super chill. Everyone feels really comfortable there. Uh, the only place to keep your wits about you a little bit is Tamil. It's known as the backpacker area. It's got a lot of clubs, so there's a lot of drunk people. It's where the beggar followed me. I personally felt relatively safe in Tamil, but just keep your wits about you pretty much everywhere you go. That's the best part about just kind of wandering solo uh, is that you could just run into really nice people and they were so lovely. <laughs> As for the people, the warmth and hospitality of the Nepali locals was outstanding. I would say second to none. I've never been in a place that has been so open to a stranger talking to them. I haven't traveled a lot and to a lot of different places, but so far in my experience, 
Uh, the amount of times I just walked up to a stranger and was welcomed into conversation was shocked me a little bit. Everyone was so helpful if they spoke English or not. I was able to ask them questions. They were able to help me when I was lost and everyone had a smile on their face. Everyone was super, super welcoming and it just made me really happy to be in the country and I loved it. I really, really loved it. I would give um, the Nepalese a 10 out of 10 and they're a big reason as to why I would come back. Apart from the beautiful scenery, just the people definitely are something that would attract me back to explore even more of the country. I think I might go and try and find some food. <laughs> Switching gears to something more delightful, food. Nepal boasts some incredible dishes and my absolute favorites were, first thing is the samosas that I had in my food tour video. When I tell you they were literally perfection. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. That place was busy for a reason. I have not stopped thinking about how much I want another samosa since I recorded that video. Delicious, 10 out of 10. If you can find Tip Top, go there, get a samosa, tell me what you think. By far one of my favorite foods I tried while I was in Nepal. That is by far the best samosa I've ever had. The second dish would have to be the pani puri I tried. Honestly, it was so yummy. Mm -hmm. So I just really enjoyed it. It was in a bubble tea store of all places and it was just the perfect snack. It had potatoes in it. I thought the water spice mixture was really delicious. It was just a really good snack. I would get it again. That is delicious. The Buffalo Momo I had in my first impressions of Nepal video. Oh my gosh, that was so delicious. Make sure if you get it, go to the table, put that sauce on your plate so you can enjoy it because those two together, the combination of the sauce and the Buffalo Momo were delicious. I tried a few types of Momo while I was in Nepal. I tried veggie, I tried spinach and cheese. If you want to try them for yourself in Kathmandu, this is the place I would recommend to go get you some. Definitely has to make it to the list. Loved Momo. Here we go. Cheers. And last but not least, I loved trying the dried fruits in my Peace Pagoda video. The spicy ones were my favorite. This is so pleasant. I'm pretty sure people told me in my comments that they're called Lapsi. And I had no idea at the time that it was such a popular snack in Nepal. I stumbled across it due to a crowd that the lady had in front of her store and I am so glad I got to try it while I was in Nepal and I would recommend that you try it as well. I will be snacking on this throughout the day. Overall, they're my favorite dishes that I tried in my travels and I would recommend you try them too if you find yourself in Nepal just to try out something different and I'd love to hear what you think. Now let's talk about some crucial warnings. First off, a universal travel tip, don't drink the tap water. It is essential to stay hydrated, but opt for bottled water to avoid any issues. Most hotels you stay in will provide water bottles to your room. Otherwise it only costs a couple of cents to get them from a convenience store. Personally, I use bottled water when brushing my teeth as an extra precaution, but I don't think you'd get sick by using the tap water as long as you don't swallow it, obviously. Will you do 400? Will you do 400? Second thing is shopping. Prices are not fixed in Nepal, so most shopkeepers will see you're a tourist and try and charge you double the real price or even more. I had this happen to me many times in Nepal, and I only found out I was ripped off after I posted my videos. To avoid this, try to ask a local person how much they would pay for the item you're interested in so you can have a rough guideline of what it should cost when negotiating. Please be careful not to do it too close to a store as I've seen some owners yell at locals for being honest with tourists about the price of things. I did it a lot with taxis personally. Um, it's just great to have a guideline of what you should be negotiating. How much? 2,000. 2,000? Yeah. Expensive. When it comes to transportation, I had to negotiate quite hard at times for taxis. To avoid any stress, I would recommend downloading and using the Patho app. It's similar to Uber and Grab. They let you book rides at a fixed price to avoid uncomfortable negotiations. 500. 
Oh I came here 500. I read online that Patho is only available in Kathmandu at the moment, but as many of you will be going to Kathmandu first, it's a great way to get a guide of what taxi ride should cost and it can help you in negotiations while you're in any other city during your trip. So 500, beautiful, thank you. Those are all my warnings, so stay safe and I hope you have a great trip. Namaste. Namaste. A few cultural tips to keep in mind are respect the local customs, embrace the diversity, and pick up a few basic phrases in Nepali. It goes such a long way when connecting with locals and immersing yourself in the culture. A few words that I can teach you now are namaste, which means hello, and danyavad, which means thank you. So great to be able to greet people in um, their language and also say thank you for those people that struggled with the language barrier a little bit. It just gets really good reactions. You feel a little bit more connected with where you are and I would recommend just kind of picking up a few words while you're there. Danyava, thank you so much. Have a great day. As a woman, I know that every time I travel to a new place, I always think, what is the dress code? Like, what should I wear? Maybe not, maybe not for me. Girl, I'm here for you. I've got the details. This is what I would recommend wearing in Nepal. I would personally say conservative is better in Nepal. Um, low cut tops, crop tops, short shorts. They're not banned, but it's more respectful to be covered up while you're in Nepal. So if you don't want to stick out like a sore thumb everywhere you go, it also just gives you so much more flexibility to go into temples or be spontaneous with your day if you do dress more conservatively. So that would be my recommendation to you all. Just me feeling so grateful to be, to be here and to be able to experience this. If you're planning your Nepal adventure, timing is key. And from my experience, the best time to travel is November. The weather is just right and you'll get the most out of your journey. That is beautiful. I found November had clear mountain views, warm days, and everything was open and available to do. When it got later into December during my trip, it started to get really cold. The days were a little bit more cloudy. Um, and I read up that even for trekking, autumn season is the best time to trek, which is between September and November. If you're planning a trip to trek or to just be a tourist like I was, between September and November are probably gonna be your best bets to get the best weather and get the most out of your trip. Everyone's so lovely in Nepal, what can I say? I'll say it a million times. And shout out to all the people I met on my Nepal journey on and off camera. I just had the best trip ever. And I just wanna thank you guys for joining me on my adventure. And it was so lovely to meet everyone that I met. See you. See you. And of course, a huge shout out to you guys. Thank you so much for watching and joining me on this trip of a lifetime. Your support and kindness has made this trip simply unforgettable. And I'm so glad you enjoyed it with me. I'm really loving that you guys are going with me. And we get to experience these cool things. And there you have it, folks. My final thoughts and recommendations for your Nepal trip. If you haven't checked out the rest of this series, be sure to catch up. As always, thank you for joining me. I hope you liked this style of video because I will be recording one of these after every series that I film. Until next time, Riley out. Riley out. Riley out. Riley out. Riley out. And this is your YouTube video? This is my YouTube video. Subscribe to her channel. <laughs>